Now what you'll notice I've done before we start is I've updated the diagram with the tension that we found from part A. T equals 34.6410 and so on newtons. That was the tension in the string BC. Now we've got to find the mass M so to do this what I'm going to do now is resolve in the vertical sense. And I'm going to select downwards as positive. It doesn't matter which way you select as positive, upwards or downwards, but I've chosen downwards purely because I want to have the weight mg as positive in my equation. So resolving downwards, if we start with this force, all of mg acts downwards, so that's just going to be mg newtons acting downwards. Now we'll move on to the tension here in the string AC, 20 newtons. Because it's inclined to this vertical dotted line here, we need to find the component of 20 newtons that acts upwards. So because it acts upwards, it's going to be minus. It's in the opposite direction to what we've got here. And what is that component going to be? Well, remember if you include the angle, it's cosine, and in this particular part of the question, we're excluding the angle. We're looking at this part here, which excludes that 30 degrees. So it will be sine. So we've got 20 sine of the angle, 30 degrees. That's the amount of force coming from the tension AC that acts upwards. Now we'll move over to the tension in the string BC. How much of that tension, how much of that force acts upwards? Well, we've got the 60 degrees here, and we're excluding the 60 degrees in this section here. So if you exclude it, then that component is the sine of that angle. So we would have minus 34.6410 one zero and so on multiplied by the sine of 60 degrees. So this is our resultant force now that acts in a downward direction and because it doesn't move that resultant force must be zero. So all we need to do now is just rearrange this to make M the subject. So if I add these two terms to both sides and divide by g, we would find that we would get m equals 20 sine of 30 degrees plus 34.6410 and so on, multiplied by sine of 60 degrees, and then we would divide both sides by g. Taking g to be 9.8 and using a calculator, you'd find that you get an exact value of 200 over 49. 200 over 49 kilograms. Or, if you want to have it as a decimal, then what you're going to find is that you're going to get 4.0816 and so on, which you'll have to round, and let's say we round it to three significant figures, then that will be 4.08 kilograms and don't forget to write three significant figures. 3SF for short there. Alright? Well, that brings us now to the end of this question.